So I received my Baofeng 1801 this morning. Uh, it took about a week to get here. Uh, bought it uh, from a vendor on AliExpress. So it's come direct from China. Uh, it seems to be okay. One thing I've noticed with the official firmware is that uh, there's quite a kind of click at the end of the beeps. It kind of does a beep, you know, the end of the beep's got a bit of a click on it. The other thing I've noticed is the build quality is a little bit uh, poor. Uh, it looked looked fine, but when I took the screen protector off, I realised that uh, it, it seemed to be pulling the whole screen out, like the screen wasn't glued in. Anyway, so I'll maybe have to put some glue around that to stop the screen falling out, though I, I can't just pull it out now. Uh, I tried tapping it, it didn't come out, but I think just, uh, yeah, that's uh, possible the screen may fall out. Anyway, apart from that, the radio looks okay. Uh, seems a nice looking radio. The the, uh, the layout's kind of a bit different in that it goes display, speaker and then the keypad rather than the other way around. Most other radios have the uh, display in the middle, but I guess uh, overall. Uh, in terms of size, uh, it's bigger than the uh, Retivis uh, RT3S, which is the MD380 uh, uh, UV. Anyway, I'm not sure if this is in focus. The depth of focus on this camera is not very good. Anyway, so it, it is a bigger radio, but, you know, it seems okay. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attempt to load the firmware onto it. The Open GD77 firmware, so I've got the Baofeng cable, because the Baofeng cable is different from a, a TYT cable. Uh, two of the data lines are swapped over. And to enter bootloader mode on this radio, I've figured out it's the same as on the MD380 UV, it's the top button and the PTT. So uh, when you do that, you get a flashing green and red light. Okay, so that's ready to go. So I'll switch over to the uh, to the CPS, so I've got the CPS running, and uh, just already set the radio type in the uh, in the CPS to uh, MD ninety six hundred UV three eighty and uh, seventeen oh one. Basically, any of these radios that have got the STM thirty two chip in them. So I'm going to select that, and then from the extras menu, you're going to select the firmware loader, uh, pick the type as DMA seventeen oh one. I've already set up the uh, donor firmware file, so this isn't a full video on how to install it on any radio. I've, I've got multiple radios, so I've already done that. So I'm just going to select the 1701 firmware. So I shall see how this goes. Uh, this is the very first time I've installed it, so goodness knows what might happen. Hopefully the uh, firmware should run after it uh, reboots, so it's... Uh, yeah, it's loading the firmware now. Doesn't take very long. It's about half a meg that has to be uploaded. Okay, right, so that's looking really, really good so far. So if I just switch back to the radio, the radio itself rather than having both, it's probably a bit unclear. Mm -hmm. So I'll try and get a bit closer. Okay, so that says settings updated, which is the standard thing. Uh, in the OpenGD77, after you install the firmware for, for the first time or, or during some software update, firmware updates, uh, if the settings data format and structure has changed, then it just lets you know that the settings have been updated, which really means they've, they've been reset back to, the, to the, their standard or default settings. So I'm going to hit uh, the green button. Okay. And then as usual, what happens is I ignore the RX only error. That's interesting. Uh, that's because the VFO is off frequency. So I'm just going to select English. Okay, now because the code plug in the radio is not compatible with the OpenGD77 code plug, then it's giving these RX only errors. Uh, in the future, we might be able to fix that actually and just reset if, it, if the VFO, it, when it's the first installed, has got this ridiculous frequency then we could just uh, just set it to uh, some useful frequency like 145 okay so uh, there we go right so that's going to get rid of that problem I'll uh, see if I can switch to VFOB yeah okay so I'll put that on say uh, 435 something like that okay so 
Yeah, so that's the, the firmware installed. Now, if I get another radio, maybe my 380 UV. Oh, well, let's, let's uh, turn it off for a second and take out the USB cable. Okay, fire it up again. Okay, so that's fine. It said uh, DM1701. Oh, that's interesting. It's not saved the VFO. Okay. I know what that is. Okay, so let's force it to save the VFO. Now, I'm not sure which buttons on the side are doing that so look okay so that's VFO A let's just force that to be saved and let's go on to the other VFO uh, VFO B let's go for 32 let's say okay let's go into the channel menu and then just try and force a save okay so I forced saved those and they're still getting RX only error Probably because the the data is still wrong. Uh, let's have a look at the channel details for that. I think really the data is completely messed up for this. Like the DMRID is ridiculous. The time slot code, basically, all of this stuff is going to be completely screwed up. So probably the best thing at this point is to rather than try and manually enter in useful information into the uh, into the channel information for the VFO is just to upload the code plug. So I've obviously got multiple OpenGD77 code plugs, so I'm just gonna plug the USB cable back in again. Okay. It's a little bit difficult filming this. Okay, and I'm just gonna go into the CPS and just upload my standard code plug into it. So here we go. Yeah, let's try uploading the code plug. Yeah, here we go. I don't know if I can get the camera to focus a little bit better, maybe. Yeah, well that's no better. Yeah, that's a little bit better, not perfect. So that does seem a lot better, and I should have my channels now as well. So let's have a look, yeah, VK3 RDR. So definitely all seems to be loaded up. Uh, those P1 and P2 buttons aren't working yet. They should be working. They should be changing the... Uh... Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, the key key mapping probably need to work on that at the moment because uh, the arrow keys normally would change the talk group, but that's been mapped to the up and down keys. But also this radio has got a uh, rotary control. And actually, though, I'd have said the road, I would have said the rotary control is probably better quality than the one in the TYT radios. Uh, in the TYT, so I'm just trying to get the video to uh, the camera to look a little bit better, but uh, doesn't look very good on my screen. Yeah, so I'd actually say that's that's pretty good. I would have said the rotary encoder on this is actually better than it is on the uh, on the TYT UV380. So I'm just going to, uh, I guess I could go on to my hotspot or I'll, uh, let's just try it on simplex frequency. So let's just do it on 145. Uh, now, the other thing I'm noticing is the display. I'm not seeing the top few lines on the display, probably not coming out on the camera, but uh, yeah, I don't know whether that's just, it's just not glued in properly. I mean, if I look at the menus, maybe the whole thing needs to be moved down within this housing or something, I don't know. I mean, we could, you know, deliberately lose some pixel, some lines from the top, but really that's going to impact on the menu, so it doesn't seem to make any sense. I think it'd be better maybe just to take the radio apart and move that down. Maybe just the window onto the display is too small. I mean, looking at this from this angle, it's totally okay. It's just if you look at it straight on then it, it's just like the aperture isn't big enough <laughs> for the uh, size of the display even even for the bottom it's just like the cutouts not big enough there because looking looking at the cutout in the uh, in the case for where it says RSSI at the bottom that that's actually looks like that's fairly close to uh, the bottom of the cutout uh, though the top maybe the top is 
something to do with the glass. Yeah, that looks like that's something to do with the glass. So, yeah, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, apart from these mechanical problems, so let's uh, disconnect that, uh, stick my UV380 onto uh, 145, uh, oops, 145, 500, FM, 145, 500, FM on here. Okay, let's just try. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, PK, 3, KYY test. Yep, that's working. And let's try, uh, I don't know which key is which. Yep, switch it into DMR mode. And switch this one into DMR mode. Uh, yep, that's working. It's obviously not coming up. Uh, yeah, so that's working on DMR transmit. I'll just try DMR receive, though I'll need an antenna on here. So I'll grab another radio. Let's find a GD77. Okay. So, let's grab a GD77, okay, talk group 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay, so that's showing uh, G4KYF because that's my UK call sign and what I was doing some uh, testing, well actually I think it's from when I was last in the UK, that's what this uh, other radio is set up for, but that's just the, uh, I think that's the TATX that's sending uh, that, that TATX must be turned on in this uh, GD77, which is... Good. Okay. okay. Right, so uh, it's definitely working okay. Uh, obviously some mechanical issues in terms of the display. See what we can do about that. And uh, potentially need to investigate the button mapping on these, uh, whether these should do anything at all. Uh, maybe rather than uh, these keys controlling the... Uh, talk groups, etc. Actually, let's, let's go into FM and see which ones are on the squelch. Yeah, it's kind of a bit weird. Potentially the, the up and down and uh, P1 and P2 would be better uh, changing the mappings on those. Anyway, uh, definitely, uh, definitely working, so that's great.